Yes, yes, yeah. You are tuned in to Offering Something. I am your host, Michael Bernie. You're feeling so good to be alive. You know I love you for watching. If you're tuning in on YouTube, click subscribe on that Michael Bernie Entertainment channel. We got a whole lot of love for our sponsors, Spicket River Brewery, Enjoy Your Life brand, and the Higher Education Music and Arts Festival. Yeah. And oh boy, we have a massive episode in store for you today. That is the truth. We are here with a guest who is an exceptional athlete, an ultra-driven individual, a humanitarian, a community leader, a ball of joy and laughter and good times, a retired New England Patriot who played in over 100 games, including a Super Bowl, a downright genuine and kind human, and a friend from my neighborhood, Max Lane. How are you? Wow, that was a great, that was a great intro. I, I don't know who that community leader is. That's you, man. When's that community leader People follow here? you around everywhere you go. Doesn't that count? <laughs> <laughs> That's Max Lane. He was on the Patriots. Go that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming oh, here, yeah, man. No, my pleasure, man. I really thanks appreciate it. Uh, let's get right into it. So, do you recall the first time that you actually played football? Um, uh, like I in, mean, in your side you yard know, you, playing catch, where you were like, "We just played a football game." It was probably like in grade school or something, just playing, uh, you know, tackle the man. They call, gotcha. it, well, we call it kill the man. We call kill, it kill the man. That's the kill game. the man with a football, and you just did it out at recess, <laughs> and you. So uh, I assume that's not the point where you fell in love with football. It happened outside of kill the man. Or was I mean, that, that a, probably a loving was part experience. Because I got to run the ball. You got you know? to run like, the was, ball. You got to touch the football. That's the whole thing. You know, you know the ball. You know, whoever the you throw the ball up in the air. You fight for the ball, and then uh, you would you know run with it until somebody tackled you, and yep, then yep. you'd have to give up the ball. Actually tackling each other. Well, you had you know it was like twenty people playing. Wow, yeah. So you had like oh, yeah, actually tackle. <laughs> I mean, this was like third grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then uh, so. I did like it because I got to got to run the ball. You right. know, once I started playing organized football, no one was giving you the I ball wasn't running anymore. The ball anymore. <laughs> They're like that guy's not getting the ball. Yeah, that's not his role. Yeah. So when was it that you started playing organized football? Um, well, I grew up in a I, I grew up in like a really small town out in Missouri, and I know Norborn. Is that exactly. how you say it? Exactly. Norborn. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm on it. We yep. didn't have pop warner or anything like that wow. um out there so the first time that you could actually play organized football would have been in seventh grade all right um but i had a hernia in seventh grade in seventh grade seventh grade came and i you was going for came a, pre, with a hernia. preseason physical <laughs> and the doctor said you've got a hernia you gotta <laughs> you, can't, you play. can't play and you got i had to get surgery oh and so i was out uh and you, then um, you missed the whole season, seventh grade. It wasn't a thing. Wasn't a thing. All and then right. whenever I got released from hernia, my hernia, <laughs> I was looking forward to playing junior high basketball. And I was out the first day I got released from my hernia. I was out playing, you know, like yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, and I broke my arm. What's going and so on I missed with basketball. you? And, okay, um, all right. So, so here we are. Grade. Eighth grade was my first year playing. Here comes organized. eighth grade, and you you were able to play football that year. No problems. Yeah. Did you touch the football when you were on the field? Uh, let's see. In eighth grade, I was playing offensive tackle, so I was not. No. 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 But then in high school, I played tight end. So, so after that one season in eighth grade, you were super into it. You were like, "I'm definitely playing football in high school," or not I so much. Like, I mean. That's that's kind of what you did that's, out okay, where I was from. Okay, that's what's going on. And I you had an older brother that was a kind of a high school football star in the local high school, and um, I looked up to him. Okay. And, uh, it was assumed that you were playing football. You knew everybody yeah, was just playing football. I was the football. youngest of five. My sisters oh, wow. were cheerleaders. Um, you know, that was just kind of what you did, especially okay. with my size. Yeah. That, that was kind of just a given. Were you – the big guy in first grade or did that happen in 
Eighth I was grade. A, yeah, I was 11 pounds when I was born. Yes, a so, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> I was 11 Whoa, pounds. So praise your mama. Pre- 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, so pretty much the, the whole, you know, the whole way through, I was always, you know, taller and everything than everybody else. All right. So you yeah. went on and you played, what's the name? Is it Norborn High School? Yeah, just Norborn High School. We you, had a... Uh, Let's see, I always tell people that I graduated eighth in my class. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, there was only eight people. Out of the 22. <laughs> 22, there <laughs> 22. you go. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we were the... They don't uh, need to know that, yeah. We were the second smallest 11-man football team in the state my wow. senior year. Yeah. So we only had 19 people on my football team. And how did that season go? What was the record? Uh, we were 9-1. 9-1. and, one. Nine we and one. Out, Yeah, undefeated regular season, got wow. beat in the playoffs. Okay. So, and that yeah. in your senior year, you were all conference, all district, all everything that you could be, right? I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah. do you get, like, scouted by somebody at Navy? Is that how that worked out? Or were you like, I want to go there? What was the process going from mm-hmm. Norborn High School <laughs> To college, you know the the way it was was uh, I've always been a probably short to midterm focused goal oriented type person. Like I yep. I don't I don't have that ability to look and be like ten years down the road I want to be here. Okay, you're not I, a big future thinker. You're I'm, operating I'm more, more in the moment in the yeah, short term. Yeah, moment to like maybe a couple years down the road. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, and um, you know because I things change and I just try to. You I know, like that about you. But, yeah, it's um, a good quality. So playing football growing up, you know, I just I knew when I played in eighth grade that I liked it and I thought, okay, I want to play next year. I want to play high school football, uh, yeah. you know? And so each year was kind of like that. Now, obviously once you get into that four years of high school, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, you just kind of roll it into the next year. But when I got to be a junior, I started real, you know, knowing that, you know, college was, you know, down uh, the road, see, yeah. you know, I was the youngest of five. So mm. I was involved or I was, a uh, an extra set of ears probably eavesdropping at a lot of college uh, conversations yes. between my parents and and, and my your siblings. brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just hearing you know even back then it's all relative, but how much college cost? Oh so yeah, I was always in my head thinking I'm gonna get my I want to get a scholarship okay, so I'm my parents catch a ride don't have to here pay. to yeah. relieve my parents of that burden. Exactly. So. Um, Going into my senior year, I went down and did a. Uh, I went down and did a I did a football camp at University of Missouri. Now, before that, my junior year, as far as Navy goes, yep. Um, Navy sends out at least back then they did. They sent out like little three by five cards to every high school coach in the country. Yes, and it just said, you know, what 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 player what juniors on your team you know, would, do you think would play, could play division one football and would consider going to the U S Naval Academy. And my head coach, my high school coach sent back my name on it. Navy sent out uh, a coach, a scout in uh, March of my junior year. Yes. And just said, you know, Hey, we're interested in you. Uh, Wait, did they approach you before the game? They talk. Did you know they were coming? Would they come before a game? This was or in March. Talk no, this was in okay. March. Okay. Oh, so okay. This like in the Not, spring. I got you. And they came out because they were allowed because the service academy was allowed to uh, um, approach. You know, recruiting has changed so much. Yeah, I mean, right. Is r- ridiculous now, but back then. Back they were then, allowed to talk to you, tell you all the good things they were going to do for you. That stuff was still relatively all right. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, but back then, this this Navy coach, he was just saying, you know, hey, we're going to be looking at you. It doesn't mean we're going to take you. But if you're at all interested in going to the Naval Academy, there's a process. And, and that's why we're able to come see you so soon. Because if you're interested in going, you need to start filling uh. out this admissions packet. And because you have to get like your senators, you know, go interview with your senators and get recommendations from them and all this stuff. So, um, 
you know, it wasn't just an easy, I want to go to school there. So, I got you. So yeah. they were allowed to kind of contact you sooner. And then, um, but I didn't still at that point didn't know like where I was going to go. So I was gotcha. still interested in other schools that were So local. you're making the decision to like, ultimately, like, are you going to be in the Navy as well as going to college there and playing football? Is that a, included yeah. in that package? So that's a, that's, a whole multi-level decision. I there. mean, it's kind of like you, when you go there and you graduate, you have a five-year commitment after you after uh-huh. you graduate. So, uh-huh. and then and growing up out in you know where I grew up, out in a small town, you know I didn't have that. I didn't think that playing pro football was, you know, it reality, wasn't an actual consideration for you. It was that I happened mean, to yeah, other maybe people. Maybe a dream, but yeah. not reality. So. um you know, I just looked at like, okay, I want to play that next year. Uh, you know, if I graduate, when I get out of college, I want to have a job. Um, those were kind of the things that were on my I mind gotcha. when I was picking a school. Um, you know, and, and the first time that I ever knew, you know, then my consideration about wanting to get a scholarship, I went and did this football camp at University of Missouri right. yep. going into my senior year. And, you know, they, the last day of camp, when I was leaving camp, the coach came up to me and said, hey, I want to see you. Uh-huh. He'll come to my office. And I went to his office, and he said, oh, we want to offer you a full ride. What? And I was like, whoa. And so I, you know, Did I, you have the thought in your mind that this, this kind of thing was about to happen when he was like, come to my office? I had no idea. Okay. I had no idea. I thought, oh, okay, what's the say? Sit down, uh, he closes the door. Yeah. How long before he says we want to offer you a full ride? Like pretty, pretty fast, pretty fast. I mean, it, 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 it was. I mean, it's all kind of a blur, right? Kind of. Does I he just, ask you for a response? So, what do you think? You want to go here? Um, no. Okay. No, he just said, you know, as I, I know you've got a lot of where you got decisions, you know, yeah, because you're not. They weren't allowed to ask you for, gotcha. yeah, all that. But um, so that's when I first knew that. Okay, wow. I can, you know, I got somebody that wants me to play next year, you know, like yeah. it's beyond, exciting. You know, beyond high school. So, um, so, you know, I was excited to tell my parents, uh, you know, and everything like that. And there was no cell phones at this point. So you ran no, no, to I the pay phone. At a pay phone. I yeah. stopped at a pay phone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was only two hours away from home. So what, I could have waited, but I couldn't could've wait. Nah, I had to that's exciting. You got to tell your parents that one. Yeah. Especially your mom after being an 11 pound baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah, deserves exactly. some okay, good news. 11 pounds is paying <laughs> off now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so during that senior year, there were other schools that would come and look and everything like that. And then, you know, the, the interest from Navy was building. Um, and then the other kind of factor, like Navy become aware that Missouri wanted you. And then like now all of a sudden, I think so. Yeah. You I know, would assume when, so. It's back then you didn't know as much as you do now right. about things. There's no, you know, no Twitter, no Facebook, all, all that stuff. So you didn't really, Jeez, how, you, do, you how would letters. we know anything would, without Twitter and Facebook, a phone call and ma- and letters. Yeah. Right. was yeah. just Accurate. basically how you could find out. Like what you were, what, who was interested in what, you know? And, um, so the other kind of factor in my mind, as far as picking a place to go was, um, Notre Dame was probably my favorite. Like I was a big Notre Dame fan in high school. I love it. It was, you know, out in the Midwest, you know, they were really good back then with Lou Holtz and, and everything. And, if there was one place that I probably would have said I will, if you, you know, if I could choose one place to go, I would want to go. It would have been there, um, but but they never sent a letter, never called, never even gave me a sniff. I understand it. I'm from some small right. yeah. podunk little town, but because they never did even at all have any interest, my thought became okay. What's what's be- what's better? Th- what's the next best thing to playing with them? To playing against them? Yeah. Navy <laughs> offered that Look opportunity because they played Notre Dame <laughs> that's every year. That's real. So wow, that's yeah. a gr- that's great. That's a good story there. So yeah. that was probably you know when it came to time to make a decision. 
that factor probably you know whether that's a good reason to go someplace but that's a competitive reason. reason to go yeah. and it's in the spirit of playing the game of football yeah. so yeah and then it, I like you know, it. also obviously great education all that stuff um which is important but that if you had like to pick a an, another factor it was kind of yeah, that. So getting my on pure, the field my with Notre love, Dame. I'm playing in that stadium. Yeah, my love, my love for Notre Dame turned into pure hatred. I can see that how that the... transition would occur. <laughs> yeah. So you run through four years. Is it four years at Navy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, le- I left. I ended up leaving before I graduated. So I left after my senior year in football. A little okay. situation. All right. That we don't need to delve into the situations. <laughs> I enjoy situations. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave that one lingering there. And then all of a sudden, in 1994, you're drafted sixth round, 168th overall by the New England Patriots. Uh, I want to know, like, where were you? Where yep. were you? Where were you standing? Uh, like when I was drafted? Yeah. Were you in the in that building? Were you watching on I was TV? At home. You were at home. I was at home. You're in Norborn. In Norborn. At your buddy's house. At my folks' house. At your folks' house. Okay. <laughs> Watching it with my parents and one of my sisters. And yeah, and one of those big TVs, and, uh, the big back TVs, right? This was probably like a. It was probably one of those like furniture TVs. Yeah, it I had can't to be, remember what my folks had back unit. then. <laughs> okay, you're tuning in, and you've watched the whole thing. Yeah, I was. So I was in the sixth round. So back then they just had two days. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was, you know, f- first, first, second, and third round were the first day. The fourth to the seventh was the second day. So on a Saturday and a Sunday. And my agent had told me that, oh, wow. that I could go anywhere between the third and the seventh round. So once you had an agent, you were like, I'm on to something. Something's going on. This is cool. Well, back up a little bit. You know how I said, like, I always was like one year, you know, I, I like playing that one year. You know, like, yep. My senior year in high school, I was like, okay, I want to keep playing this game. But, you know, I I got to Navy, and, you know, and I, you know, the first year I, I went to prep. I actually went to the Naval Academy prep school first okay. in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. And um, because they kind of used that, they like, thought since I was coming from some real small high school that it would be a good transition. Help you man um, up a little bit or opposed, something. Yeah. I think, you know, that is a way for them to use it for like a red shirt situation, a bit. right? Um, so, that seems relatively obvious, right? Okay. Yeah. And um, I, uh, that that year down at the prep school is probably one of the best years of my life. We got paid. Oh, really? We got paid like we were like an enlisted guy. So <laughs> I think we got paid like 800 bucks a month. And yes. we didn't have any free time during the week, so we only had to go. We could only go out on weekends. And we're in Newport. How do I spend two hundred bucks this weekend? We're in Newport easily. <laughs> in Newport, yeah, yeah, wilding nice. out, yeah, <laughs> quite a vibe over there. Yeah, ABC Club was probably happening back yes, then. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice man. Um, but uh. I mean, I was 19, so I wasn't going into those. I'm sure, you, know. you weren't. I'm sure. It's <laughs> playing by the rules. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so you know, going through, I just, I, I still, NFL was never, not even a thought. Wasn't on I your just, mind. Not even At- freshman year, sophomore year, sophomore year. I started. That was the first year that I started yeah. at Navy, and um, I got my first college start against Chris Slade, who yeah. used to play for New England. Who I end up, end up becoming teammates with. Wow, yeah. And um, and but I still just didn't. I was just you know going to school, whatever, all that. And then my junior year, we had a guy that was a senior that was being looked at by a couple NFL teams, and he ended up getting drafted mm-hmm. by Green Bay, and because of him, scouts were coming to practice and games, and they were seeing. Maybe and then, there's more potential over here. And yeah. they, one of the coaches, I think my old line, my offensive line coach came up to me and said, "Hey, those guys were asking about you. You know, I think they're going to be watching you." And and I was kind of, "What guys?" <laughs> and they're like, oh, "Those NFL scouts over there." I'm like, "How old are you oh, at this really? point?" Uh, I was a junior, so I was probably oh, 21. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, 21, 22. Right, right. And I was like, Damn. "Oh, really? Huh." 
<laughs> Ran back to the payphone. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> um, so kind of going into my senior year, I knew that I had a chance, you know, that people were going to be looking at me. But And still, in your head, you were like, I'm a little bit better than the guy they just drafted from here. So I – yeah, I mean we yeah. were playing different positions, but I thought I, I thought I was. Yeah. The ironic thing is that him and I were on the same recruiting trip when we were seniors in high school. Oh wow! Same weekend, same recruiting weekend, and then he went straight into the academy, and I went to prep school. Uh, so that put me a year behind. Yeah, him. yeah. yeah. Um, but I practiced against him all the time. But uh, um, so you know, still there's a lot of unknowns as a senior, not knowing if I was going to be able to play, like be able to, um, you know, be able to get out, like get out of my commitment or whatever was going on to be able to play pro football. Oh, like, cause the Navy has like some kind of slight ownership of you. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, um, so uh, let's see how we do this. How do we say this? The situation. So things happened. So things and happened that that transition I, went down how it did, and then you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you make your way into the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I was able to yeah, I was able to get out and yeah. play right away with New England. So um, I started with when you heard it on the television, you were oh, picked yeah. sixth round. You hear your name on the screen. Is it like, oh my God, I, I, even though I knew I was watching this because I was going to be drafted, I didn't actually think it was real. And all of a sudden it was real. And you were like, wait a minute, I'm in the NFL or not at all. It, You're it, just quite, like, it, it didn't happen that clean. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, uh, so going into the sixth round, like, uh, you know, I started getting worried that I wasn't going to get drafted. It's getting quiet in the house, uh, a little tense yeah, around just the a little TV. Tense. Yeah. And, um, you know, because at that point I had left school. Uh, I didn't have back. God. I didn't have a backup plan. You went. The eye contact's a little funny in the living room at I this didn't. point. Yeah. <laughs> it I is didn't have a backup. Uh, yeah, my dad is probably getting real nervous. Is um, his name Ezra? Ezel. Ezel. I was close. And he and a Z. E L. Yeah. Ezel. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's looking at yeah, you like, but, uh, boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better not have made no mistakes here, because <laughs> I know you're not living. Yeah. All right. Exactly. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I, I think the, the Bears called at one point and said, if you don't get drafted, we want to take you as a, a a free agent, which was, okay, that's good. Okay. Okay. And then, um, Something's happening. All right. But the Bears had never even, I had never even talked to the Bears. Yeah. You know, the, during this period of time when I, I left Navy in February, from February to May, I was... Or February to April, I was doing workouts at my home in my hometown, like for NFL scouts and coaches. So like Andy Reid, who now is the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, yep. back then was a tight ends coach for Green Bay. Gotcha. He came to my hometown. Just watch you do and, drills. And watch me do bench press. Watch me do old line dr- offensive line drills. Um, you know, took my height and weight, my wingspan. Uh, reach er- everything that they would they would do really? like they would do in a combine, and you know the New England Patriots O line coach back then came out a couple times. Uh, the Redskins, uh, the Seahawks, and a scout um, just kind of all these teams kind of came through. Yeah, Bears were never one of them. Gotcha. So whenever they were the first team that called me on draft day, I was like, uh, that was out weird. Of nowhere. Yeah. So, uh, but then. At somewhere in the beginning of the sixth round, I got a call from the New England Patriots. And they said, and there was the O-line coach, and he goes, hey, Max. He goes, uh, we got two picks in this round. He goes, we're going to take you with the first of the two picks. He goes, it's just it's just a couple picks away. Just hang on the phone. I'm like, oh, wow. that's awesome. That's great. Oh, he said, you got that call that you tell the people in the room, and you're like, oh, you just like watch yeah. the TV. Well, it was a corded phone. Oh, you know yeah, of I mean? course it was. The old stretching around phone. the corner. Uh, it was a long cord. But, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> that, that pick came, and they picked somebody else. <laughs> they picked this guy, Steve Hawkins, some receiver from Central some Michigan. Way, whoever he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Sorry, and I'm Steve. Like, and then Sorry, all, Mr. Hawkins. Then all of a sudden, like, Fred Hoagland, the coach, gets back on and goes, 
Oh, Max, sorry about that. Uh, we're getting you with the next one. <laughs> oh, and then you're like, oh, gosh, it is was this like real? two picks away, and then sure enough, they they did it, and then I saw about my... about that. Yeah, like, <laughs> I saw bro, my... This is my heart over here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then he said, hey, uh, you know, while I got you on the phone, Coach Parcells wants to uh, say hi to you and welcome you and all that <sighs> stuff. So then... He, Coach Parcells got on the phone and said, he goes, well, you know, welcome, you know, welcome, you know, glad you're a New England Patriot or something like that. Yeah. You know, hope you're ready to work, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yes, Coach, yes, Coach. Well, yeah, <laughs> I of mean, course. I had no idea. Yeah. All right, I, coach. I knew who he was, Thanks, obviously. Coach. Yeah. But, um, you know, and he wow. goes, uh, he goes, all right. He goes, now I'm going to put you on with, uh, you know, this woman, Nancy, that's going to handle all your travel arrangements and, Everything like that. And then, I, you know, she, because in that following weekend, I went out there for, came out here yes. or whatever, yeah, yeah. for a rookie mini camp. So one week after Ooh. the phone call, after the draft, it was on. Yeah. Came out for a rookie mini camp, and then they sent you back home. And then, um, you know, between that period of time, they started, uh, they were negotiating all their contracts. I mean, mine was a pretty standard, yep. you know, it, basically where you fell in line in the draft is kind of what you ended up getting. And, and so it wasn't a lot of back and forth about gotcha. it. Yeah. And, um, and then I think I was signing that in June. And so that's when I had to come back out in June. And then from that point on, I stayed... I think it was like June first, and so I stayed for I stayed for the month of June, and then you know went home July the fourth. Yep. Or, yeah, went home at the at the end of June. We had like two weeks off. Come back for training camp. Wow. And then, um, yeah. So uh, training camp. So that's day one practice with the whole team. So. Yeah. You're like going out to practice alongside guys you've been watching play. Um, well, I didn't it, know. I mean, I didn't really know much about New England. Okay. From being out in the middle. Right. You know, so, I knew, well, yeah. How did you feel about New England? Let's just touch on that. I mean, Were you like, yeah, or whatever? Patriots I did, have been terrible. I mean, I was excited. I knew, I, knew Par- I knew of Parcells because Giants, of what he, yeah. you know, with the Giants and all that. And I knew he's a first year guy. I knew they had drafted Bledsoe the year before. Yep. Um, other than that, the only thing I knew about New England was Steve Grogan and John Hanna. And then the two guys that played That's it. you know, yeah. that was it. Yeah. And I knew you know, I knew it was out near outside of Boston. And I had no idea what what that was all about. <laughs> yeah. What that what what's Foxborough? I have no idea. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so um you know, I think the the month of June that I was out here doing like strength and conditioning stuff, you kind of, you know, got to know the area a little bit and knew what you were, you know, you, you got were to know some Foxborough, of the guys. Though. Were you ever, were you guys like, were you going to Boston? Were you guys like taking time outside of training camp to rage in town? Or were you yeah. all a little like, no, nah, it was not. a little bit of that. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I had another, a, a college buddy, college teammate that lives down in Rainham. Yeah. And um, so I would, Probably during that month, I kind of went to hang out with him a little bit because I knew him. Right. Um, but then, yeah, we'd get, we'd, you know, do things like, I don't know, there there were places to go like out in Franklin back then and, you know, just sometimes going to Boston, but not yeah. a lot because you just didn't know, you know, you, yeah, you weren't yeah. that familiar. So. so here you are, you're in New England and Foxborough. Back to so what we consider the first day of practice with the whole team there. Do you have a feeling of like you're anxious for practice? Like you're a little like, oh, this is a little weird. Oh, just, like practice felt like a game. Just was, scared, you yeah. know. Like, um, well, the first thing that happened was we had to have we had to take a conditioning test, and our conditioning test was three uh 300 yard shuttles so basically it's like 50 and back 50 and back 50 and back right. and that's one shuttle and you had to do three of them offensive linemen had to do them in 60 seconds and you had where were two... you coming in on that well you kind of you tried to plan you tried to 
fortunately, I trained for them. Okay. And I was kind of prepared for it. And I'd come in right around 57. Yeah. Somewhere right in there. And, um, and then you had two minutes rest. You do another one, two minutes rest, and do another one. And it was a challenge. It was, you know, it, it, if you trained for it, you were okay. If yeah. you didn't, so yeah, I can see I can lose that three seconds real quick if you're not. You can't. Uh, yeah. If you're not ready, if yeah. you don't, if you're not hitting every every turn at a certain point, you, yeah. you know you're in trouble. But uh, they had this guy back then, and th- this is what put the fear in me. <laughs> you like was, this guy? Yeah. Was <laughs> this this other this other player? This guy named Mario Johnson. He was running this this uh, conditioning test, and he didn't make the first one the second one he you know hardly even finished the second the third one he collapsed on the field oh gosh was having a seizure that's not the way to on go the field parcells comes over and says when this guy when this guy comes to get his playbook and take him to the airport Wow, that was it. Kind of like on the spot. Like, oh, he didn't do any work. If he's if this is happening right now, yeah. he didn't put in the work. He doesn't want to be here. Yeah. He's not my kind of guy. See you later. But it was just like that's that was you know Parcells is also level of tolerance for yeah. stuff. So wow. and then this but this guy the the backstory of this guy Mario he was a like a Missouri high school superstar. I knew that this guy was like a guy you know like guy that was like a couple <laughs> years ahead of me. I knew him, but uh. Anyway, to see Parcells just be like, all right, tell him when he gets, you know, tell him, get him out of here. Whoa, we're disposable so, like that? And uh, exactly. Everything we've done, you could just, oh. And then, um, you know, that was the first instance. And then in the second week of training camp, I was a six-rounder. Parcells cut both two, both of our third-rounders. Oh, gosh. In training camp. So. You weren't sleeping that well. Oh. I was just like, you know, that's when I'd go to the payphone, and then be like, I don't know, I'm, I don't know how long I'm gonna last here. Yeah, you know, like I, I have no idea. This guy's no joke. Yeah, day to day, day to day, day to day, day to day. Yeah, forget and, uh, year to year. We're day to day over here. I was day to day at that point. Yeah, yeah, and um, and then going into, you know, going into the final cut. Um. <laughs> It was like the day before, just and gross I had a, pressure. You're like, ah, oh yeah, it was, it was, trying it was, to play football over here, and I'm just like dying because I'm worried if you're gonna cut me. Yeah, yeah. All right. And like the the final. I mean, we had a game on Thursday night. We had Friday and Saturday off. Sunday we were coming in for, or Friday we came in to watch film or something. Saturday we had the day off. Sunday we had to come back for a workout, but basically. He was having that just so people could come in so he could cut them. Right. Right. To get down yeah. to the certain number. And on that Saturday, I went to a. And you're uh, aware of how many people are left to be cut. Like, you'll oh, yeah. seven more to go. Yep. Oh, exactly. Oh, six more to go. You're to get down to 53. And you're trying to, like, pick the guys that are the guys going to get cut before you. And you're, like, planning it all out in your head. I don't know if I was thinking about it that much. <laughs> I just cared if I was going to make it. I okay. wasn't thinking about that. But, yeah. um, <laughs> I but I remember uh, I, the the day before I went to a wedding f- down in Newport and yep. had a couple of beers, so I was feeling a little good. And I, when I came in Sunday morning, a little hungover, um, I was walking into the the old Foxborough Stadium, and when you came walking in, you could see you could see through the glass windows and everything all the way through into the front lobby. And you, and I all I could see is I could see these two silhouettes, and uh, Parcells was one of them, and then this other guy Bobby Greer was the other one, and yeah. they were very noticeable silhouettes by the way their bodies were shaped, <laughs> and, uh, which is strictly a positive thing. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect shapes. Yeah. And uh, so I I'm like oh man here they are and I got my playbook with me I'm thinking in my head I'm thinking all right just don't make eye contact. Yeah. Just keep your head down and try to just scoot right past them. Because, like, when you walked in, if you did a quick <laughs> U-turn, if you quick did a quick <laughs> U-turn and you went down these stairs to the locker room, that's why I figured if I make it to the locker room, yeah, I'm safe. Safe for a little bit. Safe. Catch me out here. I'm so, in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and so I go in there, and I'm just like, you know, it felt like an eternity for me to get do that little roundabout, but... I was uh, just kept my head down. I was like almost to that corner, making a turn, 
And all of a sudden, I hear Parcells go, Lane. It's all right, Lane. You can breathe. You made the team. No way. <laughs> and I didn't even look up. I ran down, ran down the locker room. And I was like, just a whole, wow. you know, just a. I'm here. Oh, just like felt wow. as light, you know, felt like uh, like I was light up in the clouds. It was a uh, big smile. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. I love I love his <laughs> style, man. <laughs> so good. So from there, you went on seven seasons, like a hundred and one games in the NFL, seventy something starts, seven playoff games, played in a Super Bowl. Um, it's quite a thing coming from Norborn and living year to year at that point. I know before the the Patriots here and the tryouts, yeah. it was day to day. It was still year to year. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, making the team, the thing with playing for a guy like Parcells, you never really felt comfortable. Um, Could always be the last day because he is cutting people at, like throughout the season. Especially for a rookie, you know, for a rookie – you never got comfortable. Was there any point during the seven years, even with uh, Parcells and Carroll, that you felt like you could breathe? Or was it always that pressure of, like, even though I'm starting almost every game, I feel like this could be gone tomorrow? Well, the thing is, like... And is that strategy? With, with Parcells, it was, in my rookie year, you know, once I made the team, then I thought, okay, I'm good. I'm, but I, but still, you you still had to have the pressure to come out and every day and Put practice in that hard work. and all that yeah. stuff. And um, but I think the next year, my second year, whenever like the guy that was playing tackle ahead of me, he got hurt. I came in in the preseason, did well, and then. Uh, Basically, I didn't let go of the starting job. Who's the again. guy that got hurt? He need, deserves more credit, I think. Well, it was just, it was a great play. He was a great player. Pat Harlow was his name. He okay. was a first round draft pick in '91 from USC. Yes. And then, uh, but him and Parcells, I don't think ever saw eye to eye. Right. Um, they did Pat, not like each other. So it was just, um, I think, and then, you know, just like any coach when a coach drafts you he wants his guys to play so i don't know i I don't know what 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 was the reason i didn't really care what the reasons were but i was i was starting (laughs) playing yeah and uh so once i had a full year of starting then i kind of said okay i want to do this for as long as i can yeah you know like that first year was just getting my feet wet as a rookie and kind of learning the system and just learning you know, meeting new people and all kinds of new Boston things, yeah. and how to get around. You know, I'm living in a city. I'm living on my own. Um, you know, I'm not underneath the, in a dorm or in my parents' house. So a lot of things like that were happening. And then um, that second year, whenever I was starting, and then after that year, then I was like, okay, I'm going to try to be here as long as I can. And, um, you know, would would I say I got comfortable? No, but because after a while, you kind of realize, and I didn't realize, I probably didn't realize it that first year, that second year, but then when Pete Carroll came my fourth year, yep, I kind of realized it because I saw what they were doing personnel-wise that the day that mm. you become a starter in the NFL is the day the team starts to replace you. I see. And yeah. That, yeah. That you made is it just to that, the beginning of your end. That's a fact. Like yeah. it's like a mountain. Yep. You know, when you when you're a backup and everything like that, you're not being pushed up that mountain. You're climbing up that mountain, yes. but you're tenaciously. But you're yeah. not. You know, you're climbing, and then once you get to that mountain, you start feeling. You know, you didn't realize that that people were pushing you up it. Yeah. But you start seeing it, how there's other guys that they're like, oh, they want to get their guys in. They want to get their guys starting. You start and once looking you behind start, you like, they're, that they're guy trying, trying to, to feel, take my job? Yeah. They're What's trying to, the, coaches, the yeah. coaches are trying to fill that pipeline. Of course. You know, the players. That's right. You're because always, you, you, you compete with each other. You make each other better. That's the one thing about playing team sports I think was great because, you know, you had to learn how to. You know, you, you go out and drink beers with a guy with with the guy that's taking trying to take your job and compete exactly. with you from Monday through Friday. You know what I mean? And you had to learn how to handle that like a professional and understand that's just 
part of it. Did it always remain at a professional level, or were there oftentimes some squabbles, maybe even fists thrown? Like probably, probably not so much with offensive linemen. Okay, I would say maybe in other position groups. Guys would rather save the energy. But um, yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't boys. have much energy going on. Right, we're not wasting our energy on <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, receivers, y'all can get into those fist fight things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about the exact moment where you're you're walking into the stadium. It's the day of the Super Bowl. You're about to get out onto the field, and then there it is, the kickoff. That moment right there. I'm sure, I know you're saying you live year to year and you didn't think ahead, but I'm sure as you made your way through your, throughout your football career that you had a vision of playing in the Super Bowl, right? That's kind of a monumental thing yeah. in, in the game. So just that, I just want to know about that feeling right there. Did it exist where you were like, wow, this is the Super Bowl and I'm in it? Or was it so focused on the game that it was just like yeah there's a lot of noise and different chaos and whatever happening around here but i'm about to play some football yeah i think i think parcells did a really good job of keeping you focused on just the next ta- the next task at hand like yep. you know one game at a time you know like we weren't a i think we had i think we started out that year zero and two and so we had to really fight and claw to get back in the picture and yep. you know we didn't win the division the AFC East until the last game of the regular season and um and then that fortunately that gave us a first round bye um Denver who had killed us during the year that year um had the number 1 seed and so whenever we went into our divisional rounds we were playing Pittsburgh and right. Denver was playing the lower seed, which was Jacksonville, and Jacksonville upset them in their oh, place. Oh yes! On a Saturday afternoon, we were playing Pittsburgh on a Sunday, so we were all watching that game, you know, at our respective homes. And then when we go <laughs> yeah. show up at um, you know, at the hotel that, that that night, Saturday night, everybody you could just feel kind of like a. But it's not like we were looking. We weren't definitely not looking past Pittsburgh, right? But it but felt we knew easier. that if we could handle business against Pittsburgh, that we weren't going to have to go out to Denver. We yeah. were going to be able to have a home. We were, yeah. you know, if we took care of business, we were going to have a home AFC Championship game. So everybody was pretty excited and everything like that. And sure enough, we we beat Denver twenty eight to three, and uh, it was a great game. And you know. We had Jacksonville come in the following week, and um, we didn't play that well offensively. Our defense and special teams played great, but yep. offensively we played pretty. We 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 struggled, and but we won the game. And uh, back then, you you, know, you still you had two weeks between the AFC Championship right. and the Super Bowl, and uh, you know that that feeling because we lost, we ended up eventually lost the Super Bowl. That yeah. feeling after the AFC Championship game was probably the most the best feeling that that was felt by me just I got because you. that victory you know yep. you had that anticipation yep. of wow we're going to the super bowl two we're weeks super of bowl. like super you know bowl I mean? yeah and then you know doing television commercials all the things that are associated with <laughs> sucking you into and you're like wow i might as well be michael jackson right well, now that it wasn't like that like the you know that's <laughs> another thing that has changed yeah dramatically but i mean it was still just a you know you know, a g- unbelievable experience to be, uh, but uh, to be a part of, and to know you're going to be going into that. Yeah, so, yeah. So that feeling, if I'm going to the big game, is one of like great measure there. Yeah. Before the game starts, does Parcells give epic speeches? Is there an like? Is he have a prepared? something where it's like a moving situation i can see him being that guy and i can also see him saying nothing at all it 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 just changed from game to game you know what i mean i think you i think he was did he string together words that set a fire like you wanted to just get out there and like uh, did he do that like al pacino on any given sunday was he doing that kind of stuff I wouldn't say he wasn't like a rah rah kind of like pep talk guy. Okay. He was just more of a 
like even like his even like his team meetings during the week they made you feel like you just wanted to follow him i got you you know um you know I, I, the one the thing about him that i thought was that you know, even though you felt like you were walking on eggshells yes. every day when you were going to work there, you couldn't wait to get there because yeah. you couldn't wait to hear what he was going to say. Gotcha. And, you know, at some, sometimes what he was going to say was going to be real, really chewing the ass of somebody, yeah. some guy, yeah. and you just hoped you weren't that guy. Right. But it was kind of, you know, it was kind of awesome to watch it. Yeah, as long as you want that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know wow, I mean? look at this guy go in on him. Yep. Yeah. And so um, people f- feared Parcells in yeah. many ways. Um, from the outside, it would seem as if you wouldn't have that kind of fear of Pete Carroll. Is that accurate? That's probably accurate. Yeah. Uh, Pete Carroll was a think- different. Okay. He was a different. Uh, I still, I, I think they were, they just did their jobs, you know, different ways i think that the other you know fear was also i think the structure of the organization also contributed to that fear you know when parcells was here you knew you know that building you know back then everybody's it's been written about talked about the but that that uh split between parcells and craft right um was kind of growing dur- during those, you know, three or four years that, that, that Parcells was here. And um, part of it was like, you know, the power struggle. Like, okay. you know, Bill wanted to be able to, you know, hire and fire people. To call the shots. And, um, you know, Kraft wanted his, his, you know, his personnel people who kind of did what he said to be more involved in, in hiring and firing. And at some point that came to a head. So whenever – Pete came here. They set it up from the beginning. I got you. That um, going to be a little less abrasive around here. That that Pete is not hiring and firing. He's wow. just he's just cooking the meal. So you naturally were you, less afraid of him. You're less afraid of him yeah. for that reason. Um, also, you know, his you think demeanor. That, like, he's was, a California, okay. laid, a little laid back, the West Coast, that whole. And we were used to, you know, hard driving. As you say Jersey. these things, I feel like you felt better under the coaching of Parcells. Like he's well, more of I the mean, coach come, that you th- want. That's probably, probably so. Like I was more comfortable underneath that style because I had come from the Naval Academy. I'd come right. from a, you know, a disciplined, um, you know, way of life. So. I was used to the whole regimented regiment yeah. show up. Yes, you sir. Know. You know, going from going from my childhood, which I don't think my parents were the strictest people, but they were definitely more strict than a lot of people. Right. So I had, you know, I had curfews and all this, this is why stuff you're so and, proper. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but um, so I think structure was always something that I. And, you know, was was more yeah. comfortable with, and you felt that under yeah. the guidance of Parcells yeah. versus now Pete even Carroll. with even with Pete, like even with Pete, you know, the NFL itself. I mean, is there's structure still involved yeah. there? I mean, there's you know, you've got you, you can't be you know, you got a bus leaves at this time, practice right. starts at this time, and all this, and you know, by that by that time, I was just like. Yeah, I show up on time. I You're do all that. Now, yeah. There are some people that, that didn't push those work limits. Out yeah, that that well with, but um, but yeah, I, I guess I did like. Uh, although I did like like the thing when Pete came. Pete didn't believe in tearing up your body, like beating your body up. So whenever he, he came, we beat. didn't hit as much, uh, and everybody like that. A more well rested <laughs> for game like day. That, yeah. And like, oh yeah. Um, I can understand this strategy, Pete. Yeah. I'll get behind that. Yeah. But uh I think that um I don't know. I, I think that the people that we had at that time, you know, they were used to parcel. So I think the I think the laid backness uh, made them start 
to take advantage uh, of, yeah. of Pete and all that stuff. And, and, you know, knowing that he didn't have the power to fire you. When he was coming down the hall, you were head up, yeah. looking in his eyes, I'll walk right by you. Versus there were some your guys that were like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wouldn't, You're I not wasn't that like guy. that, but I think that was the, the feeling. I got you. You know, and, and why they, you know, by the end of the, his time here, he was here for three years. He kind of lost a little bit of control of the room because, yeah. because of that. Um, I gotcha. And I think, you know, he was coming in here at a bad, I mean, it's a horrible time. He come in, you know, we just been to the Super Bowl. Right. What do you got to do to <laughs> improve, you know? And, uh, so in the, you know, yeah, it's following a really tough the Hall situation. of Fame coach, you know? So, um, but, you know, if you look at what he has been able to do after his stint here in New England, you know, national championships at yeah. USC, Super Bowls at Seattle. He's clearly a talented individual. NFL Hall yes. of Fame coach. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean? Of course. And um, so, you know, he's definitely, uh, you know, his way works, obviously. It just, just was not a good, wasn't good timing. No. <laughs> wasn't good timing yeah. for here. When you were in the NFL, you were, you're six five, three hundred and twenty pounds. I'll go with that. But it was more like three forty. No, no, no. Heck, no, no. I got the three forty after playing football. Okay, okay. So where <laughs> were you really? You think? Uh, in between three hundred and three hundred five with Parcells. Yep. And then Pete Carroll wanted me to get up to three twenty. Okay. So, yeah. So how did you feel when uh, Mike Adams from Sports Radio deemed you big country? Was, did you enjoy that, or did you think that it was rude? It was fun. Or, it was fun. it was cool. I mean, it was, was he one of your buddies? He was a good guy. Yeah. I like I like him. You were on his show. Yeah, you yeah. and him would get along would great. We? You and him, me would and get Mike along Adams. Great. Hey, pal, <laughs> let's spend some time together. Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> now I know why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> um, how about this? You're in the NFL, right? Let's talk about the other side of it. People just think like, oh, my God, Max has the best life, and um, people want to chase you around and take pictures of you. And all of a sudden, Norborn boy, middle of nowhere, it's like you gotta, you're not just in the NFL playing like high-pressure, elite, serious football. You're trying to balance like, how do I remain like a normal person with people treating me like I'm something special? How did that like were these thoughts that you had, and how do you manage that kind of thing? Like, or do you just become like a total monster and you're like, I'm the coolest guy ever? That's right. <laughs> no. How did you how did um, you work with that? You know, I I've always said that I think I I I think I played you know I think I played in the best era of football. Right. Um, that period of time that I played in was um, right on the verge of guys making a ton of money. Yeah, you know we were right at the beginning of it, so I was able to get a little bit of that. Okay, um, give me some of that money. Yeah, but not a lot of it, just a little bit of it. Yeah. But um, also, but it was still an era where toughness was respected and. You know, versus knew, what the other side is the showboating and the yeah high flying the celebrating yeah. the and then you know flashy dressing now, nowadays you know people re, when you say you're in you know you played back in the nineties in training camp and training camp was hard it was really hard it was it was a, compared to now now I think they've made the game safer. Yes. Which is good. Which is a good thing. I've got a son that's playing it. I want it to be safe for yeah. him. So, um, uh, it's different than the I, game that you grew to love, though. I still, it still is. But yeah. I just, you know, I, I take pride. You know, the other, the other aspect of playing in that era, there was no cell phones. Yeah. Or the, the cell phones were just barely around. No social media. So you, when you went out, you could go out and have a good time and not worry yeah. about ending up. Unless you did something really bad, yeah. Then like unless the news the, got involved, you know, like if you like if you end up diving off of a stage, 
at the Paradise Rock Club back yeah. in 1990. What was the show? <laughs> it was, it was uh, Everclear. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you did something like that, then you, you would make the news the next day. But um, Coach doesn't like that move. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, it was Pete Carroll. So Does that not even uh, get you a talking to with Pete? You're like, Pete, what are you going to say to me? I had no, a good we game. had to go in. We, we had, had to go, go in. Talk. We had to go. Who in was with talk. you, Bledsoe? It was, uh, yeah, Bledsoe, me, Zolak. Zolak was involved, but he dove off at different. But parts it's always of the like stage, you three so. guys out there doing. Huh? You three roll together doing. There these. was a couple other guys that were always there too, but but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but uh, like I said, no cell phones, no social media. It was, it was kind of just a more pure right. Uh, Era. So and, uh, two decades later, where we are now, you might actually be getting more presence in. You're getting more presence in the social media and stuff because people are still like, "Oh, it's Max Lane, but the I, Patriot," but which I you think deserve. Guys they, are secluding yeah. themselves more, yeah, than they used to because of it. You right? Know, like they don't. Oh, feel, totally. In the actual going out and yeah, living your life because it, you're afraid you're going to do something wrong. Somebody's going to catch me doing this. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, a, and then you know the other aspect I always said was that now you know quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, like high profile guys. Back in the back in the, whenever I played, like you know guys like Bledsoe and those guys, yeah. they still it was a pain. It was a pain in the butt for them to go out sometimes. Yeah, I bet. me. I think offensive linemen had the best life in the NFL <laughs> because we could go out. And we knew we knew enough people. Enough people knew us mm-hmm. that uh, we didn't have to stand in line at the club. So you know, but we you weren't post the boy on the Dunkin' Donuts commercial and couldn't actually go anywhere. Right, but we could. But we could get. We could do things that we want to do. Get, right. You know, and um, you know, get hooked up at certain places. You know, go right to the front of the line and take places. advantage of that. And absolutely, I, and, yeah, of course, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, everything's free. All the drinks. Well, no, all no, right. not, take that, the not like that. Just, but more so like the line stuff. The lines. The, the line. No, oh, the, the line. Lines. Standing in line. Standing yeah, yeah in line, I know, you know what you're saying. Yeah. But um, but then when you were out, you like nobody wanted to come up and you know it wasn't like oh we want to you know like they. You know, I could go out to dinner, I could eat, you yeah. know, if I was out and stuff like that. It wasn't like a... People were less likely yeah. to be like at your table, leaning yeah, in with like, you, oh, that taking looks a picture. Big. I oh, gotcha. He looks big. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so once upon a time, when you were at Navy, you actually lined up as fullback. They gave you the football and you rushed yeah. four yards into the end zone. Score a touchdown. Yeah, that was my only touchdown after high school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was that, that was like, fun. I know you guys were up like 75 to nothing at this point, <laughs> but like, why did that happen? You were like, coach, I want the ball? Or like, why did we this? Had, no, well, we had a, like the day before at the, uh, like on our walkthrough practice, we were playing Colgate and mm-hmm. we, uh, our offensive coordinator back then was this guy named Greg Briner. And he was a fun, he was a great, he was a fun coach. You like to have fun and make the game fun. And, and he was like, Max, we want to. We, we, we might want to line you up as fullback tomorrow. I don't know why. And then, <laughs> well, I, I don't know why. He's he's like, we might want to line you up as fullback tomorrow. So let's just do, you know. And then the situation came, you know, and and uh, they're like, all right, let's. They Give called it up, go. and I did it, and uh, um, yeah, scored. Was touchdown. there any doubt? Was it like straight in? You ran all the way in, or did you get tackled and fall on the line? I don't think I even got hit. It was, wow. it was pretty. It was a pretty easy. Pretty easy score. It, was that the last time maybe you ever touched a football during a football game at any level? No. You recovered a fumble or something? <laughs> you, you know, you, you've done your own work, man. Yeah. You, you, you like that? Yeah, yeah. So I like that. that was a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, my second year, uh, and we were playing in Kansas City, yep. which – I mean, my hometown, almost, almost my whole hometown was there. Wow. And um, my dad had organized, like, uh, all the tickets and the tailgating and everything. I think we'd got, I think I think I had over 100, over 100 people um, that was that were at that game That's for so me. so cool, yeah. And, um, and yeah, we were, we, uh, Bledsoe was throwing, he threw, like, this slant to uh, Troy Brown. Yep. And um, Troy caught it and then as he was being tackled he fumbled 
and he he told me that he was just trying to he was just trying to kick it out of bounds because he was you know because he didn't want the Chiefs to get it so right. he was trying to kick it out of bounds so he was you know kicking it with his foot and and I was just following the play and uh and all of a sudden you know he kicked it and the <laughs> ball just popped straight up in the air as I was running right yeah. by the pile right and it just like popped in my hands and I just. I think I hesitated for a second, and then I yeah. just kept going. Um, I mean, I felt like I was running like uh, Carl Lewis. The wind, man. <laughs> the way you were moving, yeah. But until I watched like the, <laughs> the replay <clip>. of it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I ended up running it. I think I made it like 30 yards. Wow. And then I got tackled at the four-yard line. Uh. And, uh, yeah, I was chopped down like a tree. It was um, – yeah, I was I was so bummed, so oh, bummed. Man. It would have been unbelievable. But uh, I mean, we ended up scoring on the next play, um, which was good because I don't think I could have played another play <laughs> after that. Yeah. I was so you gave gassed. it all the gas for that. Oh, I was yeah. so gassed. I couldn't. I I was like, <gasps> oh, I couldn't do it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, good. Um, let me ask you this. So I'm sure throughout your career as you look at the other guys on your team that they're individuals that like have the ability they have the skill they have everything but they lack the ability to work hard they don't have the work ethic and you're like man that guy right there has everything but he just can't work hard and they fall off and i know a large part of like from our conversation is you work hard you're there on time you get it done you do those hundred yards time three you know you're at 57 seconds you're not going to pass out how do you, how did you maintain the focus and the drive? Like, what is it? How how do you keep that alive? Do you is it or is it something that's so intrinsic, a, a part of you that you never thought about? It? You just that's what I do. I'm on time and I do what they tell me to do and I do the work. Uh, I think that. I mean, that's a great that's a great question. Um, I think at that point, at that point in my life, it was intrinsic. Like you said, because I think, you know, you, you're you playing football ever since, you know, whether you start out, you know, playing kill the man in yeah. fourth grade and, you know, pe- and then you move up to play an organized football. Um, and after you battle through a hernia. Yeah, after you battle through on, all yeah. that. And, and you know, you had a great high school coach that yeah. – you know, had a you know, I think he was ahead of his time in the high schools out there, like doing like a weight program in the in the off season, and so you know, I had I knew that training and doing work off the field was just as important as doing work on the field at a young age. Right. And so I think you know that part was trained in me. You know, I, I obviously my parents. Um, were very instrumental and in, you know just my dad delivered gas and diesel fuel for a living yep. he had a, his own business doing that it was you saw people working I hard saw firsthand him, that's what's you know, happening his, every day you know my mom was uh you know she was a stay-at-home mom but but she you know sewed my clothes whenever i got holes in them she you know it, it was probably like you know before uh equal rights for women had really reached yeah or missouri but she (laughs) was just part of that was her role her role Mm -hmm. was to you know she had a garden so she'd raise enough green beans to can them and we could eat green beans all winter gotcha Um, yeah she would add a sewing machine that if I got. So when you want something, uh, you yeah, take I, the steps that are necessary. My jeans, we weren't running yeah. to the store and buying a new pair of jeans. Oh. She was fixing the pants that I was wearing. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I saw that, you know, and, and, you know, she just was always. So that part, I think, was became ingrained and became intrinsic, like yeah. you said. That's a great yeah. word. Uh, and, um, and so all that through was all while I was going to school, playing football right. and everything like that. And it just, it just kept going. And then whenever football was over, then at that point, that part of my I life, like a little smile about to break on your face there. Yeah. Well, no, that part, well, that part of my life was over. Then I had to start figuring it out 
right on, on your my own, own. And I, I, right. I still i still am so let's you know. talk about your current training patterns here are you in the gym every day are you are you running are you lifting weights are you swimming are you doing yoga um, are you using your body I know I saw you on Celebrity Sweat, and you're doing your standing planks with the bands, oh, the really? perfect form. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was that some, yeah, that was some yeah, thing yeah. that... Uh... <laughs> so, so what are you doing now? How, you, um, how often are you exercising of any kind to a point of where you're breaking a full sweat and you feel like I just got a workout? Uh, three days a week. Nice. That's good. Um, lately I've been doing these just, you know, obviously with COVID and everything. Um, uh, I've been doing these in-home Zoom workouts where, uh. With who? With like a personal trainer? Well, our, our. Come on, Maxie, you could do it. One no, more push up. Well, our, our players association, our union has the, the partner with this exercise company out in phoenix yeah called exos oh great and um they have trainers and we have a so like a monday tuesday and thursday at 11 a.m 9 a.m and 11 a.m i do the 11 um i'll just go online and i'll 9 a.m is still like well, in the no, brush I, and I work teeth a little phase. bit in the morning uh, and the emails and drink okay. coffee and all that stuff yeah. and at 11 a.m i try to time it because i i'll eat at noon yeah you know so <laughs> How do you choose when you're going to work out? Well, I base it around the meals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this guy's online, and uh, I can see other guys that are working out. Oh, that's – And yeah. – um, you're a part of something, and it's just uh, it's, it's been kind of a it's been kind of a good thing, especially in this these past nine months yeah. to be have stuff like that to do. This is kind of on the topic of this, but when your whole life is focused on football and with football is this like great excitement camaraderie like you're a part of something there's this fire this like like life that then football's gone how do you i i would assume that there's some sort of a void that immediately after it's done and then it continues because i know how much you love the game there's this void of like where do i release that or where do i get that so are you still on a journey? Like, how do I feel like that's probably, happening? I'm probably still trying to find that. You know, I think once that, if you ask guys like what they miss the most about playing, um, you know, they'll say the locker room. They'll say being with the guys. You know, having a group, having a group of guys. You know, just to, you know, shoot shit with. Yeah. You know, everything like that, and um, and then also probably the whole. You know, even though you didn't like practices and stuff like that, but having a, a group goal, right? A team goal, a clear, that you're concise towards, goal, like clear, win concise. game. You win, you lose. That's it. That's it. You you know yeah. when you're looking around, everybody has the same goal. Yeah. So yeah. Ha- there is no you. You it's feel it's hard to find that. It's hard to find that in the you know outside of it, and uh, I think that's why a lot of guys, um, you know, some guys do find it. Some yeah. guys do find it. They apply. I think the guys that are really good are able to apply what they learned and what they did in football, and they apply it. You know, some guys are able to apply it to business. Yeah. Uh, some guys are able to apply it in different areas. Now, you keep saying some guys, so is that because you, you're you saying that you personally I don't you know. haven't I think, really stumbled on that thing yet that's fulfilling that void? I don't think I have. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think like do you actually think that it's a possibility for you, or is that always no, going to be the is. climactic thing? Yeah, I think that um, you know I had I got married while I was playing football. Yeah, um, and I have you know both my kids. I was still playing whenever they were born, so they were. What are those beautiful kids' names? Uh, Hunter and Alexis. Hunter Alexis and Alexis is my daughter. Hunter's yeah. my son. Yeah. Um, Alexis was born in '99. Hunter was born in 2000. Yeah. Um, and like, Dad, I, why are you telling people that? Gosh, sorry. That's why? what your kids are saying to you right now. Oh. <laughs> telling everyone my age? Dude, um, I've been going to this bar for six years, Dad. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, and then I got divorced. I got divorced in 04. And, you know, that's, I think I probably fell. I probably contribute to that statistic when they say pro athletes, you know, the first couple mm. of years where they were out, 
there's like a, a high divorce rate. I yeah. probably um, fall into that and contribute to that. Um, and then at that point, you know, I've got two young kids. I live up here. My ex-wife is from here, so I wasn't going to move away from them. Right. So, you know, you start thinking about the things that you would do after you're done playing. And, you know, coaching is a lot of times a natural uh, a natural progression for yep. a player. But the thing is, up here, you can't make a living on a coach's salary no, it doesn't straight, you know, work unless you're here. coaching college or pro. Yeah, you got to you know? be on a serious and, level. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and I wasn't willing to move. Okay, because um, I didn't want to move away from my kids. So then it kind of becomes, you know, you try to make things. You know, you try to find your passions in other things, and you know, you start compartmentalizing. You know, okay, if I can't find my passion in my work, can right. I can I just have a job and then find my passion in something else? Yeah. And then try to just mix and match. And I think that's what I've been trying to do ever since. You know, I have a passion for uh you know, skiing. charity work. Char- what did yeah. you say? Skiing. Skiing. I love skiing. You like to golf. I have like a to cigar. Golf. I wouldn't say I'm pa- what, I'm mm, what, not passionate mm, about okay. that. Okay. Um, I like going I, to see live music. Yes. I'm passionate about that. I heard you've even considered playing hockey. I have played hockey. There it is. Um, let's see. I've boxed. You've boxed. I, I fought in a charity Did you watch the Tyson match. fight? I you did sh- watch. Yeah, I did. I love it. Yeah. How'd that make you feel? Did you get the feeling like when you used to watch Tyson fights? I love I love seeing him in. Well, the, that was in the day where you probably could have got free tickets to go to the Tyson fight, right? <laughs> Maybe I could have. I didn't ever try oh, okay. that. Okay, but I no, I love seeing him in the ring yeah. with those black shorts. Damn. Yeah, but so good. Um, oh, do you, speaking of things you love, do you, do you love getting gifts? Do you like gifts? Would it be okay uh, if I were to give you a gift? Yeah, Max? dude. Yeah, don't get too excited yeah. about it. All right. Why don't you move that cup off the table there? Okay. <laughs> Oh, holy moly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we got here? You want me to open it? Oh, just, yeah, open it up. Open it up. Pull that thing there. See how I made it nice and easy to open? There you go. This is the goodie oh, hey, box. Hey, here you go. Hey, don't be afraid. Dig right in. I want to see all the things one at a time. It's an enjoy your life hat. That fits on your head. You think it does? Yeah, I think so. I think it will. You might have to expand that size there a little bit on the double-breasted back. <laughs> Oh, that's what you call that? That's right, double-breasted. I know that. I have that information. Oh, yeah, that looks sharp right there. Does that look good? Oh, you look great. Kids are going to love it. What's this now? Well, you're kind of a challenge. I was like, you know, it's a little little big. He's an XL. It's not going to work on you, is it? It's a dual. It's a double X. Oh, that's a, a double, double X. X. Does that work? That's right on the. That's right on, on the, the cusp. Guy. That's a shirt from Aldous Collins, an amazing artist right yeah, there. He painted that dude named Aldous Collins. Now that I've said his name, all of a sudden he'll appear in your world. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's right. I'm gonna have to keep on doing my Zoom workouts to, uh, yeah. you know, stay in that. You can't put things back in the box as you take them out. They have to just like go onto the floor. I want to see every item oh, really? one at a time. Just get them right out of there. All right. Yeah. Because there's something that happens here that gets a little bit funny. Yeah. yeah. Throw, just throw it down. Where you don't, you you don't have to it? show it to the TV. Just Where drop it, it right there. That's great. Okay. Right. Out of the box just to eliminate confusion. Spigot River beer. How do you feel about the Enjoy Your Life beer? You had a sip like of that. It. Yeah, I do like it. It's brewed like by it. Spigot like River said, Brewery in Lawrence, a... Mass. I'm not an IPA guy, but just like you said, it's light. It's a light. Uh, Drinkable. You look like an advertisement right now with the hat on drinking the beer. <laughs> I've really swooped you in here. Max Lane loves Enjoy Your Life beer. Thicker River, and they're out of Lawrence? That's right. It's what Lawrence. it says right on the front. Entering Law Town. Oh, that's what Law. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hood. Yeah. I'll give right, you my CD, little... pushing my own music on you. Sweet. Yeah. I've heard it. Yeah, heard you that. heard it. Maybe too much this summer. Maybe too much. Uh, it's never enough. A little mask there so you make there sure you don't go. breathe on anybody. Well, now I I had COVID. Oh, so month. now you're clear? I'm, I'm immune for wow. like another month and a half. I think. Look at you. Yeah. Wow. They got it all figured out. Some stickers. Put those right on your windshield, front windshield. <laughs> More of my music. Look yeah. at this. Wow. Free Volt. 
What else is there? It's that shirt. That's not going to fit you then if the other one is questionable. What's that say? We NBPT? Uh, this is going to be it. This is going to be tough. This yeah, that's not happening. That yeah. looks like it's good for one of your arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that to uh, Hunter. <laughs> oh, open that up. There you go. So we're talking about exercise and things, and that's Riverside Yoga and Massage oh, right man. in downtown Newburyport in the old Phoenix room. My wife happens to own that place. Really? And, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, now you know. Oh, wow. And those are free, two free classes right there. Okay. Look at that. All right. Go in there, plenty of space, high ceilings. It's beautiful. You know that room? It's a good room. You like it. Let's throw them down. Yeah. yeah. I like how I've got you all confused with that. I am. I know. <laughs> a couple golf balls where you just told me you don't golf. Hey. No, I do golf. Yeah. There all you right. go. Yeah. This is well thought out, though, really. Pencil. Pencil. Yeah. Pencil. Number two. You see that right there? Wait a minute. I'm going to save that for... Oh. 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 I feel like you smoke cigars. I don't know why. Uh, no, nah, you don't golf. You don't smoke cigars. I missed. No, I do golf. You I golf, do golf, but you I don't do smoke golf. cigars. I don't, I don't smoke cigars. I really cigars. tried here. So this this in your hand here, right? So this is the... This These is the pants. <laughs> This is the There's no way to, this, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the, you. Hold on before you think too much, right? So, <laughs> this so is this a dream. Is, this, is, this is a dream. What I'm giving you is a dream, right? A dream to be in right these pants. your new, I forget about these, football. Though. The dream is to fit in those shorts. Yeah. But this, this is what happens here, Maxi baby. On this show, I give everybody that comes on here a piece of my old clothing, right? So those are given to me. What's they're, OTB? They're way too big for me. I don't know. I, oh. I know a band called Over the Bridge, but that's this is a pair of shorts that's too big for me, and, I, and I'm <laughs> going through everything I have. I'm like, there's no chance. You know what? I can't not give them some of my old clothes, and there you go. That's a dream I gave you. I, I like it better how you described it. I've given you a dream. Yeah. It could be like a goal. Yeah. I would call it a goal, but that's a more task. like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a card because you know what I'm trying to bring back as we got on this topic of the new digital world today is handwriting a note oh. to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so instead of the text message, it really does have a great impact when you receive a card that somebody wrote on it. Absolutely. Even if you like, you know, you send that to one of your friends and it was just like, hey, man. Like you a lot, Max, and be like, yep. wow. So that's why I gave you that. I don't Thank know that you. you'll ever use it, but I really hope you do. Oh, well, it's got yeah. a praying mantis on it, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that good? Oh, that's not good. That's good. I'm sure I'm sure it means something I looked good. at the options that I had and for some reason. <laughs> when I saw a praying mantis, I was like, that's Max screams Max Lane right here. Uh, you know what? I want to I want to say I've actually... All right, the first time I met you, I think, was... Um, a road race in Newburyport like 10 years ago. I was performing. They were like, hey, bro, shut up. Max Lane wants to talk. So I gave you the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down at Michael's. I, I gave you the mic. It was probably the frigid fiber. <laughs> That's right. So yeah. I gave you the microphone, whatever. And I'm like, he took my microphone in my place. I was just kidding. But I'm saying this because I actually have hosted events at Gillette Stadium on the 50-yard line on the microphone there. So I've been in your house, too, on mm -hmm. your microphone. Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to tell you that. Do you have any association with the Patriots at this point? Yeah, I do. Uh, well, we have, like, an alumni group that mm -hmm. does uh, – we raise money and give it to, like, youth and high school football programs. Yeah. Um, try to promote the sport um, at the youth level. Um, let's see. One of my side gigs is, uh, I am an NFL uniform inspector Really? on game days. So, um, wow, what a gig. yeah, they've had, they've, had oh, this, uh, they've had this program in for like wow. 30 years. Um, they use all like alumni guys to do it. So at every stadium across the country, there's, um, two guys at every stadium uh, making sure well it's not necessarily going like that but like uh well i'm out on the field like during warm-ups so when they come out yeah. for uh warm-ups i'm out there making sure they have their jerseys tucked in their socks are pulled up 
They're wearing the right brand. So you're like the stuff. uniform inspector in that sense. Like, make sure you're wearing the uniform right. You're not yeah. actually like making sure the jersey is sewn correctly. No. Okay. No, making sure they're wearing it the right way. And then, I mean, we put them on report if they're not. Wow. I'm like the uniform police. That's what's going That's on. That's what it is. Yeah. How does but, that uh, feel? It's like the it's like a parking cop. You know, I, bit. believe me, I, when I tell people what I do, I feel like it, sometimes I feel really petty and really small <laughs> for it. Um, but then the way I get I through the, it. That's an awesome feeling well, about your situation, <laughs> though. <laughs> but like when you're explaining to people sometimes, I just feel like, oh, God, this feels like such a stupid job. But but um, I think back to whenever I played, I wore yeah. my uniform the right way. I think it's important, you know, as a brand, the yeah. NFL as a brand. to want to have a look. To wear it look, to have it look right. Have a and, certain um, level of respect for the yeah. team, the uniform. Exactly. The, yeah. So that's the way I rationalize doing it. Um, I mean, we get paid to do it, which yeah. is great. Um, so that's why I'm always seeing pictures of you out there on the field with um, your I'm lovely doing. friend Melissa. Oh, Melissa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. she works, she works in like the media relations. So. Hey, you are you taking good enough care of Jack down in the basement? Is that his name, Jake? My, my cat. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know about Jack? I, I know things, <laughs> but I just know oh, things. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's doing good. Why is he just in the basement though? Well, I don't want my I don't want my house to smell like a cat. So <laughs> I put I, that's where I put the I where I put the food and the liquor the not the liquor the litter box. The food and the, uh, the, the, the drunk box. cat downstairs. <laughs> the drunk so this cat doesn't come upstairs. It's a downstairs. It's comes a basement upstairs. cat. He comes oh. upstairs. Yeah, no, I just I get, like a lot of times I'll keep him down there at night and stuff. So okay, he doesn't wake me up. You like to like make sure you're inspecting his behavior when he's around the house. <laughs> it's, I just, it's good you know, practice for out out on the field, yeah. making sure the unis are right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got I got to say this to you. Um, the The reason why I asked you to come here is because one, I look at you as a success in your field, and I think everybody does. You're you're an athlete that made it to the professional level and you went all the way. And I respect that about you. I see it as beautiful. Also, I know that you are an individual that is out there doing something positive for the world. The people that come across you, everybody that you ask about Max Lane, they have the nicest things to say that you're offering something to the world that is positive. So I just want to say thank you for being the person you are, for putting in that work, not only like towards football and all that, but being a good guy in your life. I think this is a very valuable thing and peace and happiness and all these things start from right here and then they expand beyond that. So I see you out there being a good guy. I haven't said this to you, but I respect you for that. And it's nice to tell people, even grown man to grown man, tell people things like this while they're alive so I don't have to be like running around when you're gone assuming I'm still alive maybe right. being like what a good guy he was so I'm telling <laughs> you right now so you don't have to you're a good guy coming from me I appreciate you yeah. alright thanks Mike <laughs> back at you by the way for, for whatever that's back worth <laughs> um, alright man it's been a pleasure having you here let's let's do this thing um, you got like a social media scene that you care about people followings you not want people to be involved what's your what's your ig jam whatever oh, twitter shoot. ig that's instagram right yeah let's get uh, hip <laughs> and i don't even know uh i think my i think my instagram is like just max lane wow uh, Love I'm a guy like you. Man. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's not. My Twitter's uh, at mlane six uh, eight. No, no, let's not even go. Let's... <laughs> Forget about all that. <laughs> yeah, I'll what? work on that. I'll work on that. That's my homework. I'll work on that. <laughs> um, man, I really appreciate you being here. Um, any parting words? How about you just give some beautiful advice to like the kids that are in high school playing ball right now that. I know that you weren't the future thinker, but think I, that I think they're this, good, but it's unrealistic to make it to the NFL. To, I think, uh, I mean, I think the one thing that I think that, that it takes to play the sport, you know, successfully, whether you're in high school and where, whatever level is, you've got to be um, tough, athletic, and coachable. And I think coachable is kind of like the the – 
thing that is probably the hardest part because that requires you to, um, you know, listen and apply, take what somebody's telling you and apply it to the field and, and understand that, you know, once you decide to play a sport like football, it's no longer about you. Mm. It's about the team. Right. And, um, you know, in this day and age where everybody's taking selfies and, you know, got their own, you know, it's all the social media and everything. It's all it's such a you, 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 me, me, me type uh, world. You know, to be able to play the sport, you got to be a good teammate. You got to be yeah. a good teammate. You got to be a good, um, you know, and then listen to your coaches. And, uh, you be know, a good teammate. And, even be if you willing don't, to learn. Even if you don't agree. Yeah. You know, I think you got to you got to figure out a way to um, be a good teammate. Um, so. One last thing before we go here. Did I see you dressed as Hulk Hogan? At a party? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was I was up uh, on high somewhere and I saw like Hulk Hogan run by and I was like, man, that guy really looked like Max Lane. That was you. <laughs> yeah, I got in this uh, costume for an '80s birthday party and uh, I loved it. <laughs> and uh, I, I put it on from time to time. You know, yeah. if I feel like if I feel the if yeah. I feel. You know, if I feel the, the it just calls occasion, to you. I feel occasion needs a needs get, a Hulk. You just have it on you though. It's I like in the car. It's always in the car. Well, I live it. You know, I run home. I'll get it. Throw it on. I just come back. <laughs> it's yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, Max. I really appreciate you being here, my friend. Everybody, this is offering something. I'm your host, Michael Bernier. Max Lane has been your guest today. It's a good life we're living. Never forget that. That is the truth. A lot of love to our sponsors. Enjoy your life brand, Spicket River Brewery, Higher Education, Music and Arts Festival. And you know, we really appreciate you for watching the show. Please take the time to subscribe to the Michael Bernier Entertainment Channel on YouTube and enjoy your life. That's an important thing, y'all. We're out of here, buddy. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Mike. That was awesome. Yeah.